on the bank of the Ganges, awaiting death without taking food or drink. All transcendental messages are received properly in the chain of disciplic succession. This disciplic succession is called parampara. Unless, therefore, Bhagavatam or any other Vedic literature are received through the parampara system, the reception of knowledge is not bona fide. Vyasadeva delivered the message to Sukadeva Goswami and from Sukadeva Goswami, Sutta Goswami received the message. One should therefore receive the message of Bhagavatam from Sutta Goswami or from his representative and not from any irrelevant interpreter. Emperor Parikshit received the information of his death in time and he had once left his kingdom and family and sat down on the banks of the Ganges to fast till death. All great sages, rishis, philosophers, mystics, etc. went there due to his imperial position. They offered many suggestions about his immediate duty and at last it was settled that he would hear from Sukadeva Goswami about Lord Krishna. Thus the Bhagavatam was spoken to him. Sripad Shankaracharya, who preached Mayavada philosophy and stressed the impersonal feature of the Absolute, also recommended that one must take shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna, for there is no hope of gain from debating. Indirectly, Sripad Shankaracharya admitted that what he had preached in the flowery grammatical interpretations of the Vedanta Sutra cannot help one at the time of death. At the critical hour of death, one must recite the name of Govinda. This is a recommendation of all great transcendentalists. Sukadeva Goswami had long ago stated the same truth, that at the end one must remember Narayan. That is the essence of all spiritual activities. In pursuance of this eternal truth, Srimad Bhagavatam was heard by Maharaj Parikshit and it was recited by the able Sukadeva Goswami. And both the speaker and the receiver of the messages of Bhagavatam were duly delivered by the same medium. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsura Nilikandena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha kaupa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam pavanityo vaishnavivyo namo namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama Translation again. Sukadeva Goswami, the son of Vyasadeva, in his turn delivered the Bhagavatam to the great emperor Parikshit, who sat surrounded by sages on the bank of the Ganges, waiting death without taking food or drink. So, Srila Prabhupada brings up some important points for us in this purport. First of all, he talks about the importance of hearing from the bona fide source, meaning through the disciplic succession. It is, en it is not enough just to hear scriptures. 
but the, sort, the speakers have to be authorized. They have to speak through the proper channel, through the line of the cyclic succession. And that is also, of course, mentioned by Lord Krishna himself in the Bhagavad Gita. In the fourth chapter, he describes evam param pra praptam imam rajashyo vidu sakali niha mahata yoga nashta parantapa. So when there's yoga nashta, when the knowledge is lost, then the Lord comes and he reestablishes again the line of the cyclic succession. It is not proper to just hear from anyone and everyone. They may be known as pandit, they may be even sannyasi or guru, whatever, but what is their authority? They, they, the qualification is they have to hear from the proper channel, through the disciplic succession. That system is established by the Supreme Lord Himself, and he comes again and again to re-establish this system, to show the importance of hearing through the proper channel. Then, Srila Prabhupada mentions how Maharaj Parikshit took full advantage of the warning of his impending death. He, he was cursed to die within seven days. And although he was emperor of the world, he did not delay in his preparation for leaving the world. But immediately he renounced his royal kingdom, and along with the royal kingdom he renounced all of the attributes of being the emperor. He gave up his royal clothes and he put on this dress of a mendicant, and then he left that palace, he left his comfortable surroundings to go to find simply people to guide him in his preparation for leaving this world. Maharaj Parikshit was from his very birth, in fact even before his birth, he was already blessed with the darshan of the Supreme Lord. Maharaj Parikshit is also known as Vishnu Ratha one who is protected by the Lord. While he was within the womb of his mother, Uttara, at that time, the son of Drona, Ashwatthama, had thrown the Brahmastra weapon. But the Lord appeared in that womb of Uttara and protected the child. So at that time, Parikshit was blessed with the darshan of the Lord. Therefore, he is known as Parikshit, meaning the examiner. What is he examining? He's always thinking, when will I again see that wonderful form, that form of the Lord who appeared before me while I was in the womb of my mother? He's constant, he was always examining. But he was born in the royal line. He was the grandson of Arjun, the Pandavas, they retired. They, they retired from the world after they got news of the departure of the Yadu dynasty. First there was the annihilation of the Yadu dynasty and then Lord Krishna himself finished his earthly pastimes and departed from the vision of this world. At that time the Pandavas, under the instructions of Narada Muni, also left the world and retired to the Himalayas. And Maharaj Parikshit was made the king. He had to rule the world. And he was ruling very successfully. He controlled the personality of Kali. He would not allow the personality of Kali to infiltrate anywhere in the, his kingdom. He carefully restricted all irreligious principles. And when he saw the personality of Kali chastising the cow, punishing the cow and the bull, at that time Maharaj Parikshit immediately took him to task and was ready to kill him. But because Kali surrendered, Maharaj Parikshit followed the Kshatriya code and spared his life. He gave him a place to reside. But Kali was course was not satisfied that said, there's nowhere 
if I, if I can only reside where there is intoxication, gambling, meat eating and illicit sex, I won't have anywhere to reside because these things are nowhere in the world by your rule. The rule of Pariksit was so great that there was no irreligion, there were no simple activities. So Maharaj Pariksit gave him a concession that he could reside wherever there is hoarding of gold. Because wherever there is hoarding of gold, then there will come irreligion. It is the nature of wealth that it attracts us to sinful activities. So in this way, Kali was given some concession. But when it came time for Maharaj Pariksit, uh, when he received this curse, from the son of Shringi, the son of uh, Samika Rishi, Shringi, then Maharaj Pariksit immediately understood it was time for him also to leave the world. And he went off to the Ganges, to the holy river, to find people to guide him. And Prabhupada describes, because he was king of the world, is very important. The king is the representative of God on this earth. Lord Krishna says in the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, among men I am the monarch. And certainly it was true 5,000 years ago. It may not be true today, but at least at the end, prior to this Kali Yuga, it was true. Maharaj Parikshit was indeed they were a representative of God in this world. So all the great sages understood that Maharaj Pariksit has been cursed to die. And they, had, they all gathered to be with him for the, his remaining time on this planet. Different people were giving different instructions. There were different conclude what things, what to do, different ideas, different opinions different sages, we know, they all have their different philosophies. But it was ultimately decided that Sukadeva Goswami was the right person to guide him. Sukadeva Goswami was selected because he was also an unalloyed devotee of Lord Krishna. And that was the most important thing to Maharaj Parikshit. Maharaj Parikshit's family his forefathers had all been devotees of the Supreme Lord Krishna. And he, was, he knew also that Sukadeva Goswami was the son of Vyas. And Vyas also had trained also Sukadeva Goswami in devotion to Lord Krishna. So although Parikshit and Sukadeva have nothing in common by material vision, they have the most important thing in common, that they are devoted to Lord Krishna. Sukadeva Goswami is the son of Vyas, he's coming from the Rishi, the son of the Rishi. And Maharaj Parikshit is the son of Abhi, Abhimanu, who is the son of Arjun, Kshatriyas, royal blood. So big difference in their positions in society. But that is material, that is external. What is important is the fact that they are both devotees. And because they are both devotees, then when Sukadeva Goswami will speak on topics of Lord Krishna, Maharaj Parikshit will be, feel very happy and satisfied and eager to hear. So this is uh, why Sukadeva Goswami was selected to speak to Maharaj Parikshit. And then Srila Prabhupada goes on to talk about Shankaracharya. That even Shankaracharya, he also says we should glorify Krishna or Govinda. Prabhupada, of course, in that last par paragraph of the purport, he is referring to the Vajra Govindam Stotra from Shankaracharya, right? That it is said that Shankaracharya, at the end of his life, he instructed his followers, Bhaja Govinda, Bhaja Govinda, Bhaja Govinda Mudhamati, 
samprapti samihite kale nahi nahi rakshati jukrim karine. That simply worship Govinda. All of your mental speculation and word jugglery will do you no good at the time of death. And so, of course, that is what the Mayavada teachers uh, present. They're very fond of juggling words and speculating about the nature of the Absolute. But Shankaracharya, who came to, you know, he established, propagated this Mayavadi philosophy, he, at the end of life, he tells them, Bhaji Govinda, I should just simply worship Govinda. So Prabhupada is uh, saying, at the end of life, that is what's really important. The best preparation for death is to worship Govinda. So this point is brought up in the first canto that uh, Maharaj Parikshit, in meet, meeting Sukadeva Goswami, had questions. He wanted to know, what is my duty now that I'm about to die? But he also asked, and what is the duty of all men at all times? And the reply is given that it is the duty to hear about, chant, and remember that Supreme Lord. And this is the duty of all men at all time. Because we do not know when we have to leave this world. We have no warning. Maharaj Parikshit was fortunate. He got death of warning. We're also getting death warning. But sometimes we don't notice it. We don't notice all the gray hairs. We don't notice all the wrinkles. We think, oh, you know, it's okay, you know, I'm healthy, I'm fine. But we should see the warnings are there at every moment. We, we do not know. There is no guarantee that death will come in old age. It's not that just because we've got gray hair we're going to die. People with black hair also come, sometimes meet death, you know. It's, the point is, we should all make the best use of this human form of life. The human form of life is a special opportunity. Vedanta Sutra. Shankaracharya, they were, he's fond of using Vedanta Sutra. So the first aphorism of Vedanta Sutra is Atato Brahmajigyas. Atato meaning now. Now we should understand Brahmajigna. What is Brahman? What is the difference between matter and spirit? Why, why, do, why does the Vedanta Sutra begin with the word now? Because Vedanta Sutra is not going to be read by any animal. It's human being, some civilized people, educated people, who are going to read Vedanta, who are going to study Vedanta. Now you have this human form of life. Human, the human life is meant to understand what is the difference between matter and spirit. If we do not use the human life for this purpose, then we simply endeavor in material pursuits. We're simply concerned with economic development and sense gratification. And this is a path of karmakanda, we're pious, religious, for economic development. And it, it, we, when we get economic development, it is for our sense gratification. This is the path of karmakanda. Karmakanda is rejected through the Bhagavad Gita. Although at, some, at, at one point Krishna does encourage Arjuna in the path of karmakanda, he's telling Arjuna, Swarga dwaram apavritam. Do your duty, fight, you can go to heaven. It's opening the doors of heaven for you. But then Krishna goes on to say, What is heaven? Simply the flowery words of the Vedas. Flowers, they com compare to flowers. They look very nice today. But quickly they wither and dry, fall apart. That is the nature of heavenly opulence. 
it is very temporary. As human beings, we should understand the dangers, the temptations of materialistic life. We must constantly fight against them. While we need some certain material, certainly we have material needs, but that is not the goal of life. Ultimately, everything is provided by the grace of the Lord. What we need to do is balance the material and the spiritual. We give the example, the train runs on two tracks. If the tracks are not level, you will turn the, the train will turn over. If we go too much on the one track, not on not on a balance, will be problems. If we go too quickly on the spiritual path, without taking care of the material needs, we can get problems. Sometimes uh, we have seen people come to Krishna consciousness, and they want premature enlightenment. I'm chanting Hare Krishna already three months, but I haven't seen Krishna yet. <laughs> Sometimes we come to Krishna consciousness and immediately we want to give up everything. It's not encouraged. It's not recommended. Rather, take your time. Gradually progress. Don't go fully on the material also. If we just simply endeavor for material gain, that is not human life. That is, is we're just simply becoming Dvipada Pashu, the two-legged animal. Because if our interests are only material gain, then our pursuits are only eating and sleeping and mating and defending. We simply live a comfortable life, but at the time of death, what will be our destination? While we have a human body now, if in the next life we have to become a dog, it is not a great credit. So having obtained this rare human birth, we should use it to worship the Supreme Lord. Maharaj Pariksit understood this. Throughout his life he had been very busy. Emperor of the world. No small task. And he was not the kind of king to sit back in his palace and let others run around. He himself was going out. And he himself found the personality of Kali and challenged him. So he was not a person to sit around. But at the same time, he understood the higher purpose of life. Because from the very beginning of his life, he had this attachment, he had seen the Lord, and certainly as, as being the grandson of the Pandavas, he had the opportunity to hear about Krishna, to study scriptures, and to know the higher purpose of life. Although he did not fully devote himself in that way, but when the death warning came, then immediately he dropped everything. He could do that because he prepared himself throughout his life. So we also, we have to prepare for leaving this world. And the preparation is regular spiritual practice. Daily, having Mangal Arti, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting the holy name, worshipping the Tulsi tree, these activities if we perform them in a regular manner, then our devotion for the Supreme Lord will solidify. And when the time comes for us to detach from this world, it will be an easy matter if we have prepared throughout the life. But to try to do it suddenly will be very difficult. We see the example in the second canto describes about Gatvanga Maharaj. Gatvanga Maharaj was a, another great king, very powerful king, who was enlisted by the demigods to go and fight on their behalf against the demons. And he was not fighting on this planet,
but he'd gone to heaven to fight. So Gadvanga Maharaj fought so wonderfully that the demigods were very pleased with them, with him, and they wanted to give him a, a blessing. So he asked them, just tell me, how long do I have left in this world? So the demigods to, who were omniscient told him, you have one moment. Not seven days, one moment. You have only one moment left. So God, Gadvanga Maharaj immediately transferred himself to this planet and fixed his mind on the lotus feet of the Lord and gave up his body and went back to God. He could do it because he had prepared himself throughout his life. So when the time came, when he heard, you have only one moment, it wasn't a panic. It wasn't a problem. He knew exactly what he had to do. In a similar manner, Parikshit actually knows what he wants to do, what he has to do. But he's setting the example for all of us. The end of life, ideally we want to be in a holy place, or at least we want to be surrounded by the devotees, and we want to hear about Lord Krishna. Srila Prabhupada showed us this example. You may see the final lesson. Prabhupada in Vrindavan. Although Prabhupada for years had been traveling the world and preaching, but he understood his time was limited, he came back to Vrindavan and he surrounded himself with the devotees. He just wanted to hear the holy name of Krishna and he also had devotees read scripture to him. He had the pictures of the deities in front of him. He wore garlands from the deity, and in this way he prepared himself perfectly to give up the body and go back to Krishna. We hope we can also be so fortunate to leave the world in that way. That is a very nice example. We saw also His Holiness Gorgovinda Maharaj. Another, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, lived the world in a similar manner. He, his health was not too bad. He had come to Mayapur for the GBC meetings. And he had been discoursing on Jagannath Katha. And he, just at that time he gave up his body. In the Holy Dawn, speaking of Jagannath, surrounded by devotees. Wonderful departure. Many great devotees, disciples of Prabhupada, also showed us nice example. Swarup Damodar Goswami also sacrificing his life for Prabhupada, dedicated completely, although he was highly educated with a PhD, he utilized his PhD to preach Krishna consciousness to the highest circles of science and philosophy. Meeting the leaders of science and philosophy, Nobel Prize winners, and giving them Krishna consciousness. And Sridhar Swami, Sridhar Swami had been suffering from some disease, but when he understood the end was near, he immediately came to Mayapur. And in Mayapur, he was with the devotees, hearing the holy name, seeing the deities. Perfect departures. Glorious. So this is the best way to use the human form of life. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Anta Kale Jamami Va one who remembers me at the end of life, he will come to me without fear. Hare Krishna. Any questions, comment? <coughs> Hare Krishna. Comment? Something?
questions? Are we doing on time? What's the time? Uh, you know, it's 7, 17. 7, 7, Okay. Can we break fast now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.